Hello everyone, welcome back to our weekly series. I am Dion Davidson. Um, it Takes a Village has really taken off, so I wanna say thank you so much for uh, watching every week. And I wanna give a big shout out to everyone that's been following Beagley Speaking on Instagram. I got on a shirt today, as you can see Beagley Speaking. And um, I just finished painting these earrings, so you can check out the collection on Instagram and Facebook and uh, Twitter. Follow us at Beagley Speaking. I'm so excited today because I'm joined by Stephanie and <laughs> I'm meeting her for the first time. She was referred to me by one of our um, warriors who I interviewed a few weeks back. Greta, thank you um, for recommending that I speak to Stephanie. But the most important thing is that Stephanie's story is amazing and she has been a warrior for so, quite some time now. <laughs> so um, tell us all about that because for the length of time that you've been diagnosed with lupus, I'm quite sure you have some interesting um, stories to tell us. When were you diagnosed and what type of lupus? Okay, I have SLE lupus and now I have skin involved lupus as well. Mm -hmm. um, I was diagnosed in 1994, but it was determined that I probably had lupus at least six to seven years before my Prior diet. to that, right. Yes. So you probably, you pretty much fall in the category like most people, you yes. went through years of stuff and didn't know what the stuff was and yes. then eventually. Yeah, and um, actually the day that, um, how I came to find out that I had lupus, I had a series of strokes. And the very first one, um, the day that I had the stroke, mm -hmm. I was scheduled to be admitted as an inpatient for a psychiatric consult <laughs> because my doctor told me that nobody in the world could be as sick as I said I was. <laughs> so, you know, um, I said, fine, I'll go and get the consult. And, but I'm telling you, I feel these things that I'm complaining about. Which goes back to um, because you don't have the physical symptoms to match what you're saying, they don't believe you, they just pretty much think that you're crazy. Yes. I just wanted to make sure that everybody get the gist of what she's saying, yeah. that, um, which is why I don't like going to the emergency room when I'm not feeling well. Right, and for lupus patients, it's actually not a good idea to go to the emergency room if you don't have to because they don't know your history. Nope. And what was happening with me, I'd get sick. If I was on that side of town, I'd go to that emergency room. If I'm on this side, I'd go to that one. Nobody connects the visits mm -mm. or the information. So you just go for long periods of time with no the one same knowing stuff. what's wrong. Right, and this is important information for somebody that might be going through a situation where you're trying to figure out what's wrong right now, or you have a family member that's trying to figure out what's wrong, because they're gonna label you, label you as crazy. Yes. My, um, my psychiatrist actually wanted to put me on medication, and I refused, and she was pissed. When I said she was mad that I wouldn't take the medicine, I was like, no, I'm not crazy. I'm not taking it. Like, I guess by me refusing, it made me look crazy. <laughs> yes. But still. But I knew that something was going on. Of... And when I was diagnosed, she was like, oh, you are right. I really wanted to give them a reason to think that I was crazy in that moment <laughs> because I was like, I knew something was wrong, you know, yes. but I totally understand. So tell us what life has um, been like now since you've been um, diagnosed like what are some things that you know has changed or you know good and bad because sometimes you wind up having great things happen as mm -hmm. a result of lupus and some things not so good well the great thing has been that I've been able to meet so many people from all different walks of life and um, I've kind of been a voice you know, for the people that I run into. Mm -hmm. And um, I've done several spokespersons um, events for the Lupus Foundation. Oh, that's good. And, um, you know, it, it helps me to help other people. Right. Know? And unfortunately, the downside, because I've had lupus so long, I've had mm -hmm. so many medical emergencies and 
I mean, actually, mm -hmm. by all the doctor's accounts, I'm not even supposed to be sitting in this chair. You know, I was told that by the time I got 40 years old that I would no longer be walking without the assistance of a wheelchair or someone to, to help me. Wow. Yeah, and um, I, I've had some, you know, pretty serious bouts. I've had. That just gave me chills because <laughs> I'm like, for yeah. them to even predict such a dim future and I'm sitting next to you and I watch you walk in here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> ah. Yes, I've had, three, ah. I've had three strokes, a heart attack, um, I broke my neck, I have a knee replacement. Um, I wow. Have, yes, I have spinal stenosis and arthritis everywhere, both rheumatoid and osteo. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, and I, I just got out of the hospital. Um, yeah, I remember you saying that we yeah. talked on the phone and I, I didn't even like get a chance to even get into that because we were, were talking about something else and I was just like, wow, like yeah. it, it's so many things that can happen, you know, over the course because it's like with lupus, your immune system is attacking itself anyway. So once right. you get one type of illness, it knocks you down. Right, and that's what happens. You have to be so precautionary. You can't just get up every day like a normal person and say, oh, I'm gonna do this and this. If um, you know what your day entails, you've gotta plan out the things that are the health concerns. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, the spontaneity of life kind of goes away the, the longer that you have it. And it's irritating. I'm looking away because I don't follow that model all the time, and it gets me in trouble every time. <laughs> Pray for me. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 lupus is frustrating, I think. That's the way I feel sometimes. Mm -hmm. And it also can make you, you know, depressed a lot mm -hmm. because of the quality of your life. You know, yeah. you're so used to being who you are and then you get up one day and it's like, oh, I wanna go to the gym, but I can't lift my arms up this morning. Right. You know, or I wanna go for a walk, but I'm having massive leg cramps and I can hardly stand up. Mm -hmm. So you just, every day is a challenge because the way that I say it is, every day that I get up, I don't know what I can't do. <laughs> <laughs> it might be something new. And a lot of us do push um, past, you know, everything. Because I tell people all the time, don't let my ability to do stuff fool you. I'm in pain every day. It's just a matter of how high my pain level is. And some days it's high, but I know I have to go to work because if I don't work, I don't get paid. Right. So, you know, people see it and they're like, oh, ain't nothing wrong with her. She ain't got lupus. And people say that. So it's like it's a blessing and a curse to be able to just get up and go sometimes because you, you're misunderstood in what you're experiencing. Um, so throughout all of the things that you've experienced, have you um, been on medication or are you basically doing your own natural um, path? Because I know I've met people who just do their own thing and the doctor okays it and they're doing just fine. Yes, um, well, I started off with lots of medication um, from Celsep, prednisone. Prednisone. Um, yes. The devil. <laughs> the devil. The devil. <laughs> um, but right now, uh, I'm currently still taking the Plaquenil, and that's kind of my saving grace for me because mm -hmm. my immune system is so bad that, you know, I really can't go without it because I just have one flare after the other when mm -hmm. I'm not taking it. The prednisone, they want me to be on it, but it See, has so it. many adverse effects yes. health-wise, you know. It thins um, your bones, it makes you go crazy, literally go crazy. And the hot flashes and the cravings, mm -hmm. like you eat the whole refrigerator. Yes, and the weight, um, you know, 
everyone that knows me know how I fluctuate with weight all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, I used to be quite heavier when I was on it as a regimen, mm -hmm. but I watch my diet, I, I exercise as much as I can. Most of the time, I, I just don't have the stamina. Right. But, you know, my daughter helps me a lot for keeping me active. And I was about to ask you about your support yeah, system. That's she good. Does, oh, gosh. I don't think I could even do lupus without her. Wow, that's a blessing. Yeah. So did you have your daughter before um, you were diagnosed or after? Um, before. Before, okay. Because mm -hmm. I know a lot of people, um, their concern is like having kids after um, diagnosis. And I know that's my concern because I don't have kids yet. Mm -hmm. And I've met people who've been on both sides of the coins. They've had kids before and after. Yeah. Um, and I'm, unfortunately, I've lost both a sister and a niece to lupus as well mm. who had childbearing issues wow. and um, you know I have lupus I have two sisters who have lupus I have a niece who has lupus oh, so that's right and doctors are oh no it's not hereditary um, is uh, you they must have something else you know, you see they've, her all, <laughs> they've all been diagnosed, and we actually have another family who we suspect that has lupus, but they haven't been diagnosed yet at this time. Because you got to go through so much for them to even say, okay, these markers line up with lupus. There's so many other autoimmune diseases, so they have to rule all of them out and say, okay, it's yes. lupus. Yeah. Um, so before we um, wrap up, because time is um, going, I want to actually ask you, because with your longevity, I'm so impressed by your progress. What is one thing that you would do to encourage somebody? Because we all got those days and we don't feel like it. You throw those pity parties, you throw the tantrum. Um, I know I have when people think I don't, but trust me, I'm ready to pull out these, these every strand of these gray hairs because I'm mad and I don't know what. <laughs> Um, what are some things that you would do to encourage somebody on those days when you're having those flares and everything hurts? Well, for myself, I kind of just press through. I find something that focuses me. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I paint and I'm a crafter, so I kind of throw myself into those things. Mm -hmm. But my coworkers will tell you, they kind of now know when I feel bad because I'm all divvied up when I come to work. Yes. That's because it makes me feel better. Mm -hmm. And I just feel like if, you know, if I can make myself look better, I can feel better. Yeah, the external mm -hmm. will manifest to the internal. I got yeah. you. Um, I find myself doing it a lot too. I don't wear makeup. So, mm -hmm. like, I went out and bought all these different colored lipsticks and I found the right shades of purple. And it looks nice. Thank you. And I'm like, <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm about all these purple lipsticks. And so, like, that's my thing mm -hmm. to help me. It ain't even about anybody else, but right. the little things that you talk about, like, find myself painting. And now that I'm painting um, on canvas and I like painting canvas, now I'm painting fabric, now I'm painting wooden pieces to make earrings. So it's like little things that you can do to help during a flare or depression state. Um, and this is why I call this series, It Takes a Village, because mm -hmm. these are things people don't necessarily talk about, right. but we all feel them. Right, and you know, just know that it's okay to cry. Man, because please say that again. It's okay to cry. I mean, there are days, really, that sometimes I get out of bed and once I can actually sit up, I sit there and I cry because I'm just so overwhelmed. I'm having my personal little pity party and once I'm over it, I'm good to go. If you don't take nothing else from today's episode, get that in your memory bank. <laughs> Put that in your soul because it's really cleansing your it soul. Is. So as we wrap up today, just make sure you cleanse your soul. Do whatever feels good to you, whatever makes you feel good, whether it's, like I said, buying your new lipstick, putting on a you know, your new shade that makes you feel good, whether it's crafting, like Miss Stephanie said, you put some um, effort into whatever makes you feel good. Maybe it's going for a walk. It might be something that simple. If you could get up and walk that day, walk. Because there are going to be some days when you don't have the energy to walk. 
or you might be having severe leg pain. So enjoy the days when you can do those things. Yesterday I was protesting going to the gym. I was like, I ain't going, it's my day off. And my mother called me and she was like, I see you at five at the gym. What? I was fighting the air, I was like, I ain't going. Yeah. I get to the gym and the trainer had us working out in a group and I literally almost passed out after half an hour. But I was grateful for the opportunity to be able mm -hmm. to do that. So I'm saying all that to say, when your body allows you to do some things, take advantage of that. Don't just lay around and throw those pity parties all the time and cry if you need to. Right. I cry a lot. They call, my friends call me the crybaby. Same here. <laughs> I cry a lot because I release those energies that are holding me back. So yeah. love on yourself. Love on your friends. Check on your friends, especially the ones who are going through with this thing called lupus. And remember, it takes a village for us to get better. And the goal is, even though it's not a cure for lupus right now, we will find one one day. And love is a cure. So love on yourself and love on everybody else that you come across. Make sure you share this video and subscribe. Hit the subscribe button. Hit that button. Until next time, take care.